she's been found safe. See where a New Jersey teenager missing since mid-October was finally found. The rain is done for now, but tracking another chance by morning. Decadent dishes and cozy cocktails. New York Live prepares for the cold with Winter House star Paige DeSorbo. This is News 4 Now for November 12th. I'm Adam Cooperstein, and a teen missing from New Jersey for almost a month has been found right here in the city. She was found Friday night living in a shelter. Investigators confirming they believe that she ran away from her East Orange home. I cannot imagine what she might be going through if she, she just being away from us this long, being away from her family who loves her very much. If anybody knows anything, please, please come forward. But apparently, despite the picture painted by her tearful mother was going through at home was far worse than spending the last month on the run from it. She apparently spoke with an unnamed person who convinced her to go to police. At this point, I'm not able to say anything except that the young lady appears to have run away and uh, she um, did not uh, want to make herself known to anyone and where she was. She seemed to be um, uh, more so at ease where she was. I left her home in East Orange on October 14 to go to a local deli and never returned. Her disappearance, though, didn't draw headlines until two weeks later when East Orange police joined Essex County law enforcement officials at that news conference and a massive search was launched. Federal Bureau of Investigation, the New Jersey State Police, the Orange Police Department, the Elizabeth Police Department. But it was the NYPD who found her on Thursday night. She'd been staying at a shelter in Brooklyn after taking what investigators say was a circuitous route to get to the city. Clearly, clearly this was a, uh, a, a result, great results, based an awful lot on what you folks were able to do for us. We appreciate it very much. The ensuing search for her in sharp contrast to the case of Gabby Petito after she disappeared while on a cross-country trip with her boyfriend who suspected of murdering her. Brian Laundry was later found dead. But Gabby Petito became a household name and the two cases drawing sharp criticism from advocates who say that black and brown children who disappear don't get the same attention from law enforcement or the media. We're not going to keep playing that game in the state of New Jersey that black kids do not deserve to get the same attention and as their white counterparts in this state. Every issue, every one case has got to be judged on its own merits. We in the Essex County Prosecutor's Office deal with every case on a case-by-case -case basis, and I think that that's how um, everybody, all law enforcement should approach, um, not only just law enforcement, law enforcement, media, everybody should approach every situation. We're learning more details about a wild police chase and deadly shooting on the Belt Parkway Thursday night. Whoa. Oh. This is witness video of that shooting. Investigators identify the man as 65-year-old Brian Astorita of Brooklyn. Police say it started when officers in an unmarked car initially tried to pull a Jeep over for speeding near Bay 8th Street on Thursday afternoon. The officers pulled in front of the Jeep, attempted to box it in, but police say Astorita rear-ended the officer's vehicle and then sped away. Backup officers then caught up with him near the Bay Parkway Avenue exit. That's when they say he got out, went to the back of his Jeep, and grabbed a gun. And then officers opened fire in response. Investigators say Astorita has six prior arrests, mostly for vehicular crimes. We're getting our first look at the man police are still searching for, who they say raped a woman in Central Park. Police released video of him, and they say he's wanted for questioning. It happened early Thursday morning near Swan Lake. Police say that man came up behind the 27-year-old woman, choked her until she was unconscious, and then sexually assaulted her. The Rockefeller Center Christmas tree is on its way. The 79-foot Norway spruce is set to arrive on the plaza on Saturday. Thursday, it was cut down and then loaded onto a flatbed truck to make that road trip the journey from where it once stood at a family's home in Elkton, Maryland. The tree is going to be lit Wednesday, December 1st, right here on News 4. And you can join Natalie Pascarella, David Ushery, and Access Hollywood's Mario Lopez for Christmas in Rockefeller Center, which starts at 7 p.m. 
Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria LaRosa. What a wild day. Thankfully, things are much quieter as we head into the evening and the overnight. The rain is gone. The clouds, too. We do notice by tomorrow morning the next quick moving little system rotating through will bring back some of the clouds, even the chance for some showers as we get into the afternoon. Winds are easing up as well. They'll stay a little gusty this evening and then by the overnight, more like light winds and eventually it'll get gusty again for the afternoon. But enough of that cold air has come down that we've got some 30s and 40s back on the map. 47 for the low in the city will hit 34 starting off tomorrow morning in Poughkeepsie. 40s from Islip and Eastport and down the shore with highs climbing back up briefly into the 50s. Winter is on its way, and if you're looking to cozy up with some cocktails, maybe a great meal this season, New York Live caught up with the star of Bravo's Winter House for a few pointers. Winter is coming, but Bravo's new show, Winter House, promises to keep us warm and toasty with all the drama. Today I'm meeting up with cast member Paige DeSorbo to get the inside scoop. In honor of Winter House, I thought we would go to two very wintry bars. We're at Isa Wine and Chocolate Bar right now, and you have a mocktail, yes. very fitting. And I have an espresso martini, which I feel like I am a connoisseur of espresso martini. I love it. And we'll get into what all of this yes. wintry food is. But first, tell me a little bit about the premise of Winter House for those who haven't been stopping all of your Instagram. <laughs> so Winter House is a true vacation show. We were on vacation for 17 days and we acted like it. We drank every day, we laughed every day, and then we mixed in some wintry activities. Okay, so speaking of fun, talk to me about what we have in front of us here. First we have the burrata, then we have lamb chops, then we have baked ginger shrimp. Yum. And I just feel like this is a very wintry little bowl. I mean, anything that comes in a hot culture right? is like very, Isn't that very cute? warming. Oh, that's really good. Wow. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Okay, I could literally sit here with you and ask you so many more questions <laughs> with all of this chocolate all day, but there's one more wintry spot, right? Yes. We are at Fiddlesticks, which is a New York City staple, especially in the winter. It's been here for over 25 years and such a fun bar. And this is adorable. I feel like we're about to play a drinking game. So what do I we know. have? <laughs> so the first one is a winter wellness, which is mezcal, turmeric, Basically, a juice cleanse with mezcal. Awesome, and mine has no alcohol, so it kind of is good for you. <laughs> yeah. and the second one is a chai sour, and it has craft gin in it. Love the foam top. It's like, almost like you could get it at Starbucks, but it's alcoholic. I love that, <laughs> and mine's- And the last thing that we have is an Irish coffee, which is my favorite kind of coffee. Paige, this has been so lovely. Thank you for yes. spilling all of the Irish coffee with me. <laughs> now, where can we watch the rest of Winter House? So Winter House is on Bravo on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Cheers to that. Yes, cheers. It's wild video showing a woman inside the lion enclosure at the Bronx Zoo. And if the scene looks familiar, it may be because she's done it before. News 4's Ida Siegel takes us inside the incident. Cell phone video shot at the Bronx Zoo this afternoon. It shows a woman in a blonde wig inside the lion's enclosure. Witnesses say that woman jumped over the railing past where she was supposed to be with two dozen roses in hand and approached the animal as if it were a long lost friend. We spoke with the woman whose husband shot that cell phone video. They were there with their two sons. She did not want to be identified. It was a bizarre moment, but not an unfamiliar one. Two years ago, a woman named Maya Autry went into the very same enclosure and appeared to taunt the lions, dance for them. We showed Autry's Instagram account to the witness on the phone, and she thinks it is the same person. Autry now has blonde hair on her Instagram page. I can't believe she did it again, or if it is even her, but it's, it's a... Uh... I don't know what's, what, what's going through people's minds. Autry was charged with criminal trespass the last trip here. A Bronx Zoo spokesperson tells us tonight onlookers alerted staff, but she was gone by the time they got there. The zoo says she was 15 feet away from the animals and wasn't in any danger. They definitely need better security because if she's able to do that a second time, there's no telling what will happen the third time. She might not be as, she might not, might not be as lucky. 
Thank you so much for joining us here on News 4 Now. We'll see you right back here next time.